Taking a look at Drake Mayne, his statistics for 2023. Pretty impressive there, uh, over 3,600 passing yards, 63% uh, completion percentage, 24 passing touchdowns to nine interceptions. And again, uh, maybe doing it with a little less uh, talent on offense his last season there in North Carolina. Taking a look at the top 10 picks here for the 2024 draft. You'll see five quarterbacks in the top 10, of course, with the three quarterbacks going at the top of the draft. And then Michael Penix and J.J. McCarthy. And then you have Bo Nix going 12th overall. You got six quarterbacks in the first 12 picks. And as you see there, uh, Brock Bowers just going to uh, the Raiders, who are another team I thought would be in the market to uh, add a quarterback. But six quarterbacks of the first 12 picks, I think, is uh, most staggering there. It's insane. And you have three who I don't think were expected to go in the top ten with obviously – well, and Knicks did not. But um, to see Michael Penix go at eight is jaw-dropping. Mm -hmm. And, Brian, does it show the desperation, desperate nature of the quarterback position and offense in general in the NFL right now when all of these – the first – how far have we gotten with no defensive player? Right. So this shows the desperate nature of the league. And when Robert Kraft says – publicly and privately without a coach and a quarterback, you're peeing into the wind. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, I, I mean having played quarterback in the NFL for 15 years, it's a quarterback-driven league. There's no doubt about it. So, you know, you look at the history of the league, you, you, people are going to take first-round quarterbacks, and, you know, a lot of them are going to fail. That's just the reality. But if you're an organization and you want to, you know, get the fans excited, you want to get the, the organization excited, you take a quarterback in the first round and then you hope that it, it, it plays out. And there's so many different routes that it can go. And, you know, the one that I'm kind of looking at, like, man, he's going – there's two really that are going to great situations, Caleb Williams and J.J. McCarthy. They're going to teams that are very talented to begin with, and they're going to go in and have the ability to be on a good team with playmakers around them. The other guys are kind of going to teams where, you know, the commanders, they had the second pick for the reason. The, the Patriots had a third pick for the reason. You know, those teams aren't built to really help a rookie quarterback, whereas the Bears and, and the Vikings, I mean, those guys could have great years as, as rookie quarterbacks. The non-Falcons teams that took quarterbacks are in quarterback purgatory, though. And so they don't have one. They need one. Mm -hmm. There's one there that you can talk yourself into, which, you know, Bo Nix, I know there are plenty of people. Hey, he's, he's athletic enough. He's got enough arm. He played in a weird offense where he threw it sideways about 75% of the time. But we can see something there. There's enough good decision-making there. There was so much growth from when he was at Auburn to where he's at Oregon now and can show you something that it's more worth it to us to roll the dice at that position than take somebody that we might feel more sure about but might be a guard <laughs> or might be a tight end yeah. and not really going to move the needle one way or the other. I think that's what you're seeing. It's sort of the money ballization in some ways of football. Teams are looking at it. They know what wins. It's the quarterback position. They'd rather take risks there than some of these other spots. Who has the worst situation of all of these six quarterbacks? Which player just went to the worst situation? Wow, I tough. would say Drake May. I, yeah. I've talked to people who <laughs> yeah. believe, Bert, that in terms of if you're in the pro personnel department of another team and you're looking across yep. the league – at which offenses have the most talent. I mean, the Patriots would be at the bottom of the list, yeah. let's maybe go, the second to last. Let's go throw Caleb Williams is going to throw to Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, and DJ Moore. <laughs> Jaden wow. Daniels is going to throw to Terry McLaurin yeah. and Jahan Dotson. Um, Bo Nix is going to throw to now um, Cortland Sutton. To Cortland Sutton. Sutton. Yeah. yeah, like so they're Michael a little Penix bit more. Penix has Kyle Pitts. Penix has Kyle Pitts, Drake London. And then J.J. McCarthy has the best situation. He's throwing to Jordan Addison, Jordan Jeff or Justin Jefferson, yep. and T.J. Hawkinson. <clears throat> it's... I mean, yeah. it, it's pretty cut and dry. I is think. it pretty – is Drake May going to the worst situation by far? He's got right. a rookie head coach who's never been a head coach. Well, that's what a rookie is, mm -hmm. Tom. But he's a defensive-minded head coach, um, an offensive coordinator and a, and a quarterback's coach and an offensive consultant who've never really worked together. And you have no left tackle except for uh, Okafor. Chuck's Okorafor. Okorafor, yeah, Okorafor who is yeah. going to play left tackle, according to Elliot Wolf, But he's never done so, Brian. Yeah, but I'll say this. Having played against the Patriots, having been on the Patriots for a long time, and then having played against them last year, that defense, I mean, you're really keeping the defense intact. That's, mm. that's the reality, and that defense is tough. I would go against them a lot during practice, and, you know, you kind of – it's practice. you got the ins and the outs. 
And going against those guys in a game was not easy because they're always changing the front. You don't know how to identify the defense. They play really well together. They mix the coverage. So I would say that Drake, you know, we've already said, hopefully he doesn't play as a rookie. But the Patriots in general, whoever's playing quarterback, is going to have the benefit of a good defense. Will that defense go away without Bill Belichick being here? I know that Phil and I have reported and talked about several times. It's Steve Belichick. And Gerard are running the defense. Bill, over the last two years, you were there as well. He had to spend an inordinate amount of time on the offense. Will the Patriots' defense be just as good without Bill Belichick so that they're not a team that can't play defense and can't play offense? I don't think much changes on defense when you have DeMarcus and, and Gerard. I mean, those guys have been under Bill running that system. I know Steve's not here anymore, but they've everything that they know they've learned from Bill and that 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 defense. So I really don't see the schematics changing. And the reality is at that level of of you know where they're at, they have a lot of players who are gonna have input too. You know, the Jabro Peppers, the Judons, um, you know, you got a good corner who who got hurt last year, but you have enough players that have played that they're going to be like, hey, we did this. Let's just stay with that. And so I think, you know, Gerard is a young coach. He's going to listen to the players. He's a former player. He knows what those guys, you know, he sat in those seats, which I think the players love. I know as a quarterback and, and a player, like, I always looked at the coaches who played. Like, you get it. You sat in my seat. You understand. All right. Uh, so, so far, through uh, 13 picks now, you got six quarterbacks, and the Saints uh, on the clock here with the 14th overall pick. Set it's going to be another over. offensive player. Well, no defensive player. Is it going to be? Yeah. I guess. It's an offensive yeah, tackle. It's, How about it's that? It's Waga from Oregon State. Too. Well, there you go. Uh, Michael Hawley, Michael Felger, Ted Johnson. We'll let you guys take it from here. Yeah, take it from here. Uh, Felger, uh, we were just talking about the situation where, with Drake May. Is he in a bad situation? Uh, I know you think he is, but I just want to point out, as you before you continue to just beat down uh, Alex Van Pelt, I want to point out, look, I just looked. Last year, with their five quarterbacks, uh, they were 10th in football with, with points scored, with five quarterbacks. That's pretty impressive. So I don't know if, if he is a wizard. I, I know he's not a, an offensive wizard, but he took a lot of lemons last year and made some uh, yeah. nice, nice little lemonade with, I would with say 10th in points. From the outside, it feels like he did a really nice job there. Which yeah. would, then why was he fired, and was why not a hot candidate? Well, I mean, if you're gonna, as you've said before, um, uh, you know, different context. If you're gonna ask me to explain the decision making of the Cleveland Browns, okay, well, I, I can't help you with that. What about the other 31 teams then? Okay, because he was not a hot candidate. He right. was the last guy. He wasn't even a hot candidate here. He was the last guy interviewed. And I'll also point out he's still being paid by the Cleveland Brown, Browns, which right. is a recurring theme, as is Ben McAdoo. So I have a hard time having a lot of faith in a guy that wasn't sought out around the league, was just fired from his previous employer, and is being paid by somebody else, which is where this Patriots team has gotten into a lot of trouble in the past. So I'm sorry. Yeah, the financial part I'm not, I'm not going to get into because, I, I mean, look, it, it's a legitimate concern. I'm just talking about as far as working with Drake May. Financially, <laughs> Drake May is not worried about that. But – we, we know uh, the league is strange in ways. As I pointed out before, there are some really talented uh, old coordinators who don't have jobs. And so I, it, it, it's not like, uh, you know, apples to apples. Okay, if this guy doesn't have a job, then he sucks. If this guy does have a job, he's really good. There are some coordinators uh, outside of New England who have positions uh, who aren't very but, talented. But it's this is a weird thing sometimes. This is his first coordinator job. Right? Yes. I mean, this is first this, time he's ever been hired to call plays. This yeah. is his first coordinator job, and and I'm just a little bit surprised that you would you with the confidence in which you're saying it, feel like he's got a good good coaching when you're he's being coached by a guy, who I'll be honest, I'm not so sure the head coach of the pay, Patriots wanted this guy to begin with. You know, me, I, I don't know. Let me he's, ask you, Ted. They've played Cleveland a couple times in yeah. the last three years. Did we spend one second saying, uh oh? Watch out for the Van Pelt Stefanski offense, did we? It, it's never, no. never, not once. No. But, it, now, it, but, it, but, but now, but now we've got the guy. Okay, got it. No, nobody said that, Mike. That's such BS. Nobody said he's the guy. What I'm saying is he's not a bum. He's not a. He's not. Uh, he's not. I'm sorry. He's not the McVay. Everybody's not McVay. Everybody's not Kyle Shanahan. I just like but saying the same it, things about a guy when he's 
on the team or I'm, on someone else's no, team? No, I'm just looking so at I'm, 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 I'm looking at his track. I'm sorry, I'm looking at his track. I record. happen to say the exact same thing about Alex Van Pelt when he's a Brown and when he's a Patriot. So maybe that's my problem. Uh, no, no, I'm saying the same thing about him as his career. I'm looking at his career. I'm looking at his numbers. So you want to ignore the numbers. I'm just saying that the guy was in Green Bay for a long time as a quarterback's coach. Uh, he's an offensive co- he was a quarterback's coach in Cincinnati and Cleveland when Kevin Stefanski was calling the place, which is not unusual. It's not unusual for a lot of uh, head coaches to be play callers, and they have off- offensive coordinators who have never called plays. Kevin O'Connell never called plays when he was offensive coordinator for the L.A. Rams, but now he's pretty good in Minnesota. Mike McDaniel didn't call plays in San Francisco, but now as a first-time play caller and head coach, he's pretty good. That's all I'm saying. Just pointing out the facts. He, I mean, he, he could. I mean, but here's the thing: we we all we're not. I would say the evidence would 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 indicate that it, it's my, it maybe not be the best fit. I mean, he, you know, does he come from a Shanahan system? I mean, he's, you talked about what his system is and that it's a defined system. I'm not so sure I know exactly what that is. I mean, you heard Gerard Mayo say in his press conference, Running. they're, they're going to be a game plan offense. Running. No. Okay. It, it's, go, so, go run, so, it's, uh, you, you have a run the ball, play action. Uh, they go run the ball, play action. That's their system. That's what it is, essentially. Boil well, it down. I mean, so, so what is, that's all Alex Van Pelt brings to the table. That's, what's is, the, is that's the Kevin Stefanski offense. That's what he was doing the last four years. That's what they did. I just, I just, I just, I just, I'm not so sure the profile of the offensive coordinator the Patriots have right now that you can sit there with any confidence and say that's the best guy for this young quarterback. Brought to you in part by John's Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow.